Hello everyone, this is Peter and you are watching the Command Valley. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Commander content and to support our channel. Theros Beyond Death has been out for several weeks now and we're still brewing some amazing decks from the new commanders that were released. If you haven't yet, check out some of our other deck techs. I've included links in the description, the likes of Siona, Athreos, Perforos. You'll find it all in the description. For this week's deck tech, I will be talking about Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Uro is a legendary creature elder giant. He costs one, one green, and one blue. He's a 6-6, six, six, and he says when Uro enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. When Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And then his escape cost is two green, two blue, and exile five other cards from your graveyard. At the time of recording this, this is the most valuable card in the set, likely because of the impact it's having on Standard and Pioneer. But what most intrigued me was its potential to be a rather unexpected commander. Looking to upgrade my Prime Speaker Vanifor deck for a while now, this deck came kind of unexpectedly and naturally as a super powerful draw and ramp engine that fit nicely into the niche that I wanted to play in. Now, the goal of the deck is to use Uro to give us value and keep recurring him from the graveyard. After you bring him onto the battlefield from the command zone, most likely you're going to be forced to sacrifice him, except for a couple of cases that we'll talk about later. We'll use this to our advantage and build a semi self mill deck to continue to get Uro out and eventually find our win cons by drawing tons of cards. Let's dive right into the deck tech. First, I'll be talking about some utility cards that are unique to this deck. Let's talk about some unique ramp spells. For the first draft of this deck, I've actually elected not to put a huge emphasis on mana rocks. It's going to be a trial to see how much it makes an impact on the deck. Normally, mana rocks are a really good way to pump up your mana and you don't have to be limited by playing just one per turn. But Uro is already such a powerhouse of a ramp spell that I would probably prefer to draw land cards rather than a mana rock because I can just get them out with Uro as soon as I get them into my hand. So I don't mind having a lot of land cards in my hand at a time. Additionally, however, I do have many ramp spells that will help us accelerate our strategy and get more value out of our lands. Cards such as Nissa, who shakes the world, who will make our forest tap for more mana when she's out on the battlefield. Growth Spiral and Urban Evolution, which both play as a redundant Uro type ability, just in case we're having some trouble getting him out. And there's also Nylia's Intervention, an, a new card from Theros, which will help us get a bunch of lands into our hand in case we're running low. I won't cover every card in each of these categories, so if you're curious to see what other ramp spells I've included, check out the deck list in the description and it'll have it all laid out nicely in there. The next category we have is card draw. Uro does a lot for us on this front, but there are a couple of spells that we can use to get even more value out of Uro. My favorite of these is Greater Good. Greater Good is an enchantment that costs two and two green. It reads, sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power, then discard three cards. Now in this deck, we don't mind sacrificing Uro a lot. I mean, we're expecting to have him in the graveyard all the time. Greater Good is just generally a good card draw engine for green decks with big creatures, but this also works perfectly with Uro. Sacrificing Uro for the Greater Good gives us six cards and also fuels our graveyard with cards to exile to escape Uro. This is an all-star in this deck and it always feels good to have this on the battlefield. Additionally, we have Tatiova, Benthic Druid, Soul of the Harvest, Guardian Project, and Fecundity, all of which give us a little bit of extra card draw from utilizing Uro's abilities and having him enter the battlefield and be sacrificed a lot of times. Last up for our utility cards, we have Board Wipes and Interaction. The Board Wipes are all very similar in this deck in that they all return permanence to their owner's hands. This is great because there are plenty of cheap Board Wipes in this category for blue, and if we return Uro to our hand, it doesn't feel bad to play him again because we're kind of expecting him to end up in the graveyard anyways. I've included Devastation Tide, a cheap catch-all Board Wipe that sometimes we can use its miracle cost to our advantage. 
River's Rebuke, a targeted board wipe for some more troublesome opponents. It'll just make one opponent return all of their non-land permanents to their hand. Really powerful. There's Flood of Tears, which will sometimes allow us to replay Uro after we bounce him, depending on how many other creatures and enchantments we have on the battlefield at the time. And then there's Profaner of the Dead, which allows us to exploit Uro and most likely bounce all other creatures on the board. This might not be good against a big creature deck, but more likely than not, your more competitive friends are playing smaller creatures on their battlefield and it's going to wipe out everything. For interaction, I've also included cards that synergize well with Simic strategies as well as graveyard strategies. We have Void Slime and Swan Song, two very good counter spells just on their own. And we also have Circular Logic and Devious Cover Up, which synergize really well with our self mill strategy here. Now for more specific synergies for the Uro strategy. The first is Bounce Spells. Getting Uro into your hand can be helpful in a pinch when you don't have the cards in your graveyard to escape Uro, but you still want to get that card and land advantage. Simic Charm and Aether Mutation both do the job fine for us, plus they're not bad at interacting with our opponents if there's a troublesome creature on their boards. Team or Sabretooth can let you return Uro repeatedly, which is nice and Ghostly Flicker, while it doesn't save Uro from death, it doesn't really return it to our hands, it can help us double up on the Enter the Battlefield triggers on Uro before it gets sacrificed. Overall, however, you do have to keep in mind that unless you keep Uro on the battlefield, he's going to end up in the graveyard eventually. And these are just helpful alternate options when you don't have the option to escape Uro. And I've tried to include things that are pretty flexible at dealing with other things on the board just in case the situation arises so it doesn't feel bad to have this card in our hand. To that point, it also helps to have some graveyard recursion as well in case a row or another key card gets stuck in the graveyard. I've had several games where a key win con ended up in the graveyard because of greater good or some other self mill card and I always had to find a way to get it out in order to win the game. Green Warden of Marasa is probably my favorite choice for this. Green Warden of Marasa is an elemental creature, costs 4 and 2 green, and he reads, When Green Warden of Marasa enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. When Green Warden of Marasa dies, you may exile it if you do return target card from your graveyard to your hand. And he's a 5-4. So this can help us return two cards from our graveyard to our hand. Now, you would, might think, why not play an Eternal Witness? This card, the Green Warden of Marasa, is very powerful and often overlooked over Eternal Witness for good reason. Eternal Witness is a three mana spell and Green Warden of Marasa is a six mana spell. The reason why I've elected to keep this in is for cards like Greater Good because sacrificing Green Warden of Marasa to draw five cards it's pretty good. It, it doesn't feel bad to do something like that. Of course, in, including Eternal Witness as well is not a bad idea either because maybe you need something cheaper in order to have enough mana to win the game. Fey of Wishes is another great card in this deck. If you cast it for its adventure cost, you can retrieve a card that you put into exile back into your hand. So even if things go sideways and you need a card that you use for escape fodder, Fey of Wishes works great to get that back. I, I've used this a couple of times to get something back. It's just a great flexible card to have. I've also included Loaming Shaman and Elixir of Immortality, two cards that will shuffle your graveyard into your library just in case you're running out of cards in this deck and you can't afford to self mill much longer. I don't know how well I feel about this strategy yet because getting cards back into your library after working so hard to mill them into your graveyard is kind of counterproductive to Uro. So this is just a temporary to trying things out. Maybe it's useful when a lot of cards get exiled and we need something more in our deck because we don't have our win cons ready to finish out the game. Let's talk about our self mill cards next. These cards are crucial to being able to fuel Uro's steep escape cost of five cards from your graveyard. And fortunately, green and blue both have some great cards to let us do this. The first cards that come to mind are Golgari Grave Troll and Life from the Loam, both having dredge abilities 
that will help us get a lot of cards into our graveyard. Golgari Grave Troll is an awesome card in our deck. It's almost as useful as Greater Good when the main goal is getting cards into your graveyard. Six cards into your graveyard is more than enough to cast Uro and helps propel the next time you need to cast Uro as well. Not only that, getting him back into the graveyard is not hard, especially when you have to discard so many cards from your hand when you don't have a Reliquary Tower out, so you can just keep on doing it over and over again. Jace Memory Adept gives us an absurd amount of self mill with his zero loyalty ability, allowing us to target ourselves and mill 10 cards. This fuels two castings of Uro, and since it's rarely targeting your opponent, it's easy enough to keep it on the battlefield without being a real threat to anyone. Activating him once is enough to make him worth it. Foster is an unexpected but very powerful card in this deck. It is an enchantment for, for two and two green. It reads, whenever a creature you control is put into a graveyard, you may pay one. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and put the rest into your graveyard. Not only are we getting a creature every time Uro dies if with this out on the battlefield, but we get to mill all of the cards in between, which definitely doesn't feel bad in this deck, and it can really help us cast Uro multiple times in a turn. Just a couple other sweet cards to mention in this category. We've got Windfall, which will force our opponents to draw, but also fuel our graveyard. The Binding of the Titans, which is a sweet new saga from this new set that will mill everyone and allow us to recur a creature or land at the end and Drowned Secrets, which gives us just a little bit of extra mill every time we cast a blue spell, such as Uro. If it suits your needs, a lot of these cards can be used in a mill strategy targeting opponents, but to make this deck self-sufficient, it's most likely going to be more helpful to target yourself in most of these cases. Now, let's talk about cards that we're playing specifically to support Uro and boost the value we get when casting him. If you listened to our podcast episode that we just released a couple of days ago, you might have noticed that we talked a lot about not having cards in your deck that do nothing when your commander isn't out. Fortunately, Uro is a really easy commander to cast in this deck. You're going to be casting Uro at least five or six times in a single game of magic he's very hard to remove even if he gets exiled he'll just go back to the command zone and most likely you're never going to have to pay more than five mana to cast uro so you can most likely rely on him to be on the battlefield and that gives me a little bit more security in what kinds of cards that i choose because i i really don't want cards that will feel useless if i don't have him out so I've tried to choose cards that will help in the cases that Uro isn't that easy to cast, but also feels feel really, really good to have when Uro is out. First, let's talk about Alchemist Refuge and Leyline of Anticipation, both of which give your spells flash very flexibly in blue-green. This is especially helpful in cases where you want to hold up your mana in case of removal spells or board wipes, and then at the end of the previous opponent's turn, flash an arrow for some extra card and land advantage before your turn. The Leyline is especially a powerhouse in this deck, and it makes me contemplate spending the money to get a Vidalcan Orrery and an Emergent Zone to put in this deck as well. Additionally, one of my favorite cards in this deck is Abundance. Abundance is an enchantment for 2 and 2 green that reads, If you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. With Abundance out on the battlefield, when you cast Uro, you're going to gain three life, then you're gonna to go to draw a card. And if you don't have a land card in your hand, you can just, with abundance, you can say land, and you can go through your deck until you find a land. You'll put that in your hand, and then you get to Uro's second part of his clause, and you can put that land onto the battlefield from your hand. If you do have a land in your hand, you can go for a non-land card, and that can help you filter through your deck and find those win cons even faster. It's a super awesome and flexible card in this deck, especially paired with Greater Good, essentially getting us six non-land cards into our hands every time we activate Greater Good. Recurring that two to three times will almost guarantee that we find something to win us the game. 
Lastly, I've included Sundial of the Infinite and Mirage Mirror. Sundial will allow us to end the turn in response to Uro's sacrifice trigger, so we still get the advantage of him entering the battlefield without having to sacrifice him. Of course, this doesn't actually save us any mana because Sundial's cost makes it cost four either way, but it can save us some turns as well as some cards in our graveyard to cast Uro this way on turn four instead of casting him on turn three having to get more cards into our graveyard and then casting him on, on turn five or six. Mirage Mirror is simply a helpful way of getting Uro on the battlefield when the proper Uro is being sacrificed. Mirage Mirror has to be on the battlefield for a turn before it can copy Uro and get any use out of him, but I still believe it's a valuable inclusion in the deck, especially if an opponent has a really useful card that you can copy as well. Last but not least, let's talk about our win cons. We've got two main avenues of play here that play into Uro's strategy nicely. For the first avenue, we have Avenger of Zendikar paired with either Crater of Behemoth or Finale of Devastation. Avenger of Zendikar is going to allow us to make a ton of tokens, especially with the amount of lands that we're going to have on the battlefield at that point. To give these tokens the boost they need, we either give them Trample and a big buff from Crater Hoof Behemoth, which will at the minimum be a plus six plus six buff with Uro on the battlefield, or give them Haste and an even bigger buff with Finale of Devastation, which is at least a plus ten plus ten at that point. On top of that, we really only need Finale of Devastation to make the combo work, but we, if we have the Avenger of Zendikar on the battlefield already, I've managed a play where I've sacrificed the Avenger to get some extra card draw off of Greater Good, and then play Finale of Devastation to tutor him from the graveyard, put him on the battlefield, double the amount of plant tokens, give them all haste, give them all a huge buff, and swing out to win the game. This is a super powerhouse combo in green and it's a great way to close out the game, especially if we're playing as many lands as we are in this game. Most times when I've pulled this off, I've had something like 20, 25, 25 plant tokens swinging at my opponents out of nowhere. It especially helps to have a card like Nyssa on the battlefield to double the mana that you're making, because then you can just pump all of your mana into your Finale of Devastation and swing out to win. Now, this of course will not always work. If someone stops your tokens with a board wipe or you run out of ways to recur Avenger Zendikar or your opponent is going wide and you can't swing past him, we have a second avenue for winning. This avenue is to use either Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, or Thassa's Oracle to win with no cards in our deck. It seems pretty obvious, but we're going to be drawing a ton of cards in this deck. At a certain point, most likely around the time we're getting our combo ready to go, we're only going to have about 20 cards in our deck if we've been properly doing our self-mill strategy up to this point. With the various self-mill cards that we have in this deck as well as a ton of draw spells, it won't be hard to find a way to draw the remainder of your deck and then cast one of these two cards to win the game. Again, these are really, really crucial in a self-mill strategy like this. You really don't want to be stuck with no way to get Finale of Devastation out, but this can happen, and everyone's going to see this coming from a mile away. So if you don't have one or two cards, maybe even three cards that will help you win the game with no cards in your library, it's going to be hard to find a strategy that always wins you the game. And with that, that's my deck tech. Thank you so much for watching this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed this take on Uro. I look forward to seeing what other builds you think you can think of to support this very unique commander. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what your ideas for building Uro are and what, maybe what cards I missed in building this deck. The best way to support the channel as we continue to grow is to subscribe. So if you like what we've got, consider adding us to your subscriptions. Check out the full deck list in the show notes, as well as the other deck texts that I've included in the description. Thank you all, and I hope to see you again soon.